April is one of the busiest months for film festivals. And I'm getting ready to go to the Tribeca Film Festival April 17th through the 28th. It's always packed with the new films, filmmakers, and this year they're setting up the anniversary films, which is uh, one of my favorite areas to check out some of the films that came out from long ago. 30th anniversary for King of Comedy, which stars none other than Robert De Niro, one of the founders of the Tribeca Film Festival and directed by Martin Scorsese. And what I'm thinking is I'm sitting here now, well maybe this is my big break, this is my big chance, you know what I mean? Then again we have uh, the 50th anniversary of The Birds, Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece, and of course one of his favorite blondes on the set is Tippi Hedren. They're coming, they're coming! And then there's the 25th anniversary of Beetlejuice. I always like to see Gina Davis on the big screen. It's one of my favorite films to watch about the hauntings. Can you be scary? What do you think of this? One of the things I love about going to this film festival is seeing some really new films, new filmmakers coming out of it. And I have a couple here that may or may not be connected, but they certainly sound like it right now. One is called Dead World Order, directed by Dana Levy, a look at the connection with and to preserve and organize objects that have come down through an inheritance. You know, maybe something out of your great aunt's a closet that you don't really know where it all came about. And here they're, they're going to give you a little historical background of it. Another is called Grave Goods by Leslie Tai, and it's things that were once collected in a lifetime. And then eventually, when the person goes, it's got to be left behind. What happens to it all? You know, it's something that they really cared about in their lifetime, and then somebody else takes over it. I love, always love, a romantic comedy, A Case of You by director Kat Coiro. It's a romantic comedy in the social media age. You never know what's going to happen in those things. All right, another film that I'm going to keep an eye out for is The Director, and it's about the fashion house of Gucci by cinematographer director Christine Voros. I've been hearing a lot about this young uh, director here whose alma mater comes from Harvard and New York University's Tisch School. Directorial debut was in 2008 called The Ladies, and she won like 15 festival grand jury awards. Her film Kink, a documentary about the fetish empire of kink.com, really just had a tremendous buzz at Sundance this year. And uh, I'm really looking forward to what she has in store here. It sounds like she's coming off with a little bit of an edgy theme every time she comes in. It's something a little bit out of the ordinary and you don't expect it. So I'm expecting the unexpected from Christine Boros. Uh, the next one that I am again looking forward to seeing the work of Ricky Stern and Annie Sundberg is Let Them Wear Towels. And it's a documentary about uh, the female journalists that have to go into the locker room, you know, after a baseball game. And again, it's a little bit of the edge that they always find. Last year they did Knuckleball and uh, that story, again, it's got a little bit more than just the way you, you hold the baseball, but it's about the players that, you know, were not not going to follow the routine so they never do follow a routine and I always find you know it's something a little bit more than the the run-of-the-mill documentary. The next um, batch that I'm going after are some of the films that are made by um, a feature film with Julianne Moore and it's called The English Teacher directed by Craig Zisk. You know what he's a bully and someone needs to tell him that he's wrong. Uh, Julianne Moore has been very successful with uh, indie films as well as Hollywood films and she comes out with really bringing the emotional impact that women go through in a lot of these situations that her films are, are always about. Uh, here's another film by a veteran filmmaker, Neil Jordan, who's called, who directed Interview with the Vampire. This is called Byzantium and it is a vampire movie but instead of the guy which I th always thought Rutger Hauer should have played Lestat. But he has two women in this film. I don't know very much about it, but I got hooked on Interview with the Vampire, written by Anne Rice a long time ago, and the genre still lives on. You know, they live forever.
This one is for the environmentalists. It's uh, Gasland Part 2 by Josh Fox, who did the Oscar-nominated Part 1, Gasland. And of course, in Part 2, we see what happens after the fracking is going on in the area. The aftermath of fearless fracking, the companies come in, they do a tremendous amount of danger, uh, dangerous work, and uh, they just wreak havoc on the infrastructure of the local environment, including, you know, they're having some impact on the water that uh, comes down to New York City and to millions of people. Uh, what I want to know more about, what has been really happening, you know, they kind of sweep things under the rug, and you know what, after you see this movie, go sign a petition. Another film that I'm going to uh, look out for is called Bottled Up, directed by Enid Zentrellis, starring Melissa Leo, another New Yorker who comes away with these really incredible character portrayals. This is a story of addiction and of a person who is in a relationship and, and loving the, the addict. It's a really tough call for a lot of people. And she always comes through as a real winner in a lot of these uh, characters that she develops. A film that I'm really looking forward to seeing again, Running From Crazy, a documentary by Academy Award winning director Barbara Koppel. And it's a documentary about examining the personal life of Marielle Hemingway who was the granddaughter of Ernest and whose family went through a lot of personal grief through suicide and depression and she herself struggles through depression every day. I saw Barbara and Marielle Hemingway at the Sundance Film Festival. The, the audience was completely filled. Everyone seemed to have a story of knowing someone or going through some form of depression. And the way Barbara handled it was with such grace and Marielle was just wonderfully open and candid about uh, this uh, runaway problem, you know, that, uh, that people face every day. Keep an eye out for that. Go see it. It's really a really good, good documentary there. All right, that's what I have in store for my list of things at the top of the list that I'm looking at right now. There's so much going on there, not to even mention the short films, the animations, the Tribeca Talks uh, panel discussions. If you're really into that, that's great. They have evening events. It's spring, it's April, it's get out there and support your filmmakers that you know and you want to get to know out of New York. Tribeca Film Festival, April 17th to 28th. Month or two. Are we friends? Can I still call?